You are listening to Real Girl Talk Podcast Radio. I am your host, Sherry. Each one of these episodes will provide you an opportunity to recognize, develop, and achieve all God has for you, bringing you incredible guests, faith-filled messages that will motivate you to reboot, regroup, and reinvent yourself in faith, business, and lifestyle abundance. Now let's level up, ladies, and let's dive in. Welcome back to another episode of Real Girl Talk Podcast Radio. You are in for a treat today. My fabulous guest, Stacey Wallace, is an eight-time author, speaker, entrepreneur, and CEO of Fueled by Fire. She has a global consulting and training company that focuses on equipping CEOs, entrepreneurs, and individuals with skills, mindset, intelligence, and technologies needed to build a purpose-driven faith-based, highly profitable life. Hey, Stacy, how are you? I am doing great. Excited to be here. Good. Beautiful. You're so beautiful. I meant to tell you that so before beautiful. we started. Beautiful woman. And we were talking about how we can take some pains in our life before we started recording. We turn them into some type of purpose in our life. And it's easier said than done for some of us. And so the point in being able to share some of the pains that we've been through is so we're able to help other people that mm-hmm. are in the midst of hurting right now that do not see a light at the end of the tunnel, which you and I have probably both been there in our lives. We learn over time that, you know, God truly does use everything for his good to his glory. And even though it's hard for me to ever say, well, you know, there's always a good twist to the reason why my son passed away. I'll never say that because I'll never truly believe that that's going to be something that God and I'll have to have a discussion about when I get there. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, Or maybe Bryant will fill me in when I get there. But I do believe that he used what happened to, um, fuel, like you say, fuel a fire (laughs) in me to be able to help other moms and women that have been through horrible tragedies in their life Mm -hmm. to be able to uh, regroup and reboot and reinvent themselves in their lives and and where they are. But I'm going to let you just kind of tell everyone who you are and what you're about. And we're going to dive into what it actually means to be fueled by fire, because that truly does mean something more than I realized when I read it after I listened to your TED talk, which was very good, by the way, and we'll let everybody know where they can listen to your TED talk. And I will put a link in the descriptions on the show as well, where they can just click straight to that YouTube because it was very, very good. It's an amazing thing. TED talk, it obviously gives opportunity and platform for people to be able to express great topics, but that one has been such a blessing because it's been behind Fueled by Fire. And for people who haven't heard about Fueled by Fire, they're you know, your mind goes, well, actually, if you look it up, it's a heavy metal rock band. Yeah. <laughs> in, in the, in Facebook, uh, we've gotten the trademark now and we've gotten the website and all of that, but it really does have significant meaning. And um, I've been tremendously blessed over the course of the last 35 years in corporate America and business startup. Uh, we've taken companies from scratch into the hundreds of millions and built sales teams into the hundreds of thousands. So when people hear our story and that now we help other people do that through our coaching and consulting programs, you know, it sounds great because that's the, what you call the light at the end of the tunnel. That's right. a lo- where a lot of people want to aim to, to be able to have house paid for cars paid for, oh no man, anything but to love them and to be able to be living in surplus so that you can give extravagantly. I I dreamed of those days in all of the seasons of pain and heartache and rejection and abuse and divorce, suicidal depression, house burning down, list goes on and on and on. But when I believe when God finally gets your yes, Mm. when he really knows you're not going to be moved by the circumstances of this world, you'll be in it. But when you can prove to him you're not of it, that you can handle the heat in the kitchen, you can handle life circumstances and still give him glory, Mm. that's when that yes becomes progress. And that's when I believe he can then begin to put you under the spout where glory and favor and abundance flow out. For years, we we wanted breakthrough in different businesses. And uh, Mm -hmm. one company that we started with in the game room of my brother's house went to a $1.2 billion market cap. You hear those successes and I'm going to, I'm dropping here and I know it can sound like a flex, 
you know, if you heard on the TED talk, five U.S. presidents I've been with, uh, traveling around the world, singing at the Olympics. I was an overperformer my entire life. And performing was the way that I found my identity. Mm. Even in business development, uh, you know, in order to have that many wins, you've had to have gone through a lot of losses, right. a lot of setbacks, which leads to the when you have a setback, don't take a step back, get ready for your comeback. Because sometimes your setback is actually a set up by God to help you reinvent, reboot, rethink, or even recalibrate your entire life. Mm. And so that's my story is the story of consistent comebacks, seven major economic collapses in the, in the United States that we have lived through. And we felt the trauma of every single one of those economic downturns. Yet on the other side of the economic downturns, because we continue to keep our eyes on our North star, which we believe our number one purpose on this planet, our purpose is not our talent or our gift or our job, but our purpose is to reflect God, whatever it is. Right. Reflect God, whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, a podcast host, a, a business person, whatever you are, let his light shine through you. Let his love shine through you. Even if you've got horrible lows, you lose, you have a loss of a loved one or you, your house burns down or you go through divorce and setback, whatever it is, don't let it define you. Let it be something that God shines through you in the midst of adversity. And suddenly you take on something we like to call the magnetic factor. And the magnetic factor means that if light can get through your, first I like to say, if the story got to you, I believe that no matter what your story is, it's a gift from God. Mm -hmm. I don't think he puts death on people. I don't think he puts sickness on people, but he has to allow it because he could stop anything. That's where a lot of people get confused. God, why didn't you stop it? Right. God could have stopped many of the things in my life, but had he have now 20, 30 years later, I would, if I would never have unwrapped that gift and I would have left it just in the box as trauma, I would never have had the nonprofit organization, the multiple businesses, the lives that have changed, reaching tens of thousands of women around the globe. But because of the gift of the trauma, the, the setbacks, the financial setbacks, the businesses that didn't work, when I unwrapped that gift, I began to see that in every pain there is potential in every setback, there's a comeback. And that really is for us in Fueled by Fire, whether it's men or women, it's identifying. It took me about 10 years to unwrap my, my divorce at 21. Mm -hmm. I was a, nominated for New Female Vocals of the Year. Everything was looked like it was coming up roses. I, I had this great life. I had this great career. I was making amazing money. While doing that, I was also one of the top people in a big network marketing company selling water filters. It just seemed like everything was working. And then yeah. until it wasn't, until life happened, until setback, until the abuse started, until the divorce, until feeling like, why would God ever want to use me mm. when now my beautiful Cinderella story has been crushed? Mm -hmm. And yet, give it a few years, I unpacked that story. And I realized that the unwrapping of that, God was going to use that to birth M women. A number of years later, where I would now be reaching women and girls who've suffered through trauma and abuse and trafficking and being giving, giving them homes and giving them transitional living, had I not have had the stories of my past, I wouldn't have the platform that I right now operate in from now on and in my future. And I want you to speak to the woman right now that is going through, she hasn't come on the other side. Mm -hmm. So we've come on the other side and we still continue. I don't want people to think, oh, you know, we, we've made it through all these traumas in our life and we've come out on the other side and now it's just smooth sailing for the, for the rest of our life. It's not. To be a Christian doesn't mean that you're free from any type of trauma or turmoil, but it's how you handle what comes into your life and the faith that you have to know that there is something that's going to come out of this, that's going to be good and glorify God. So the person that's going through it right now, whatever it may be, it could be divorce. You and I've both been through, obviously we've both been through horrible divorces and, you know, I've been remarried for 25 years to a wonderful man, but for that woman, that's maybe going through a divorce or just lost her job because, mm -hmm. you know, I've, 
been in corporate America for 16 years and lost a job for the first time in my entire life several years ago and thought, how did that happen? How am I on top of my game over here? And this happened. Speak to her. Where does that woman begin? Maybe she's got the faith that you and I have, but it's really, that light is really, really dim because it's hard for her to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Well, faith, it's interesting because faith is a journey that builds upon itself. Yeah. It's like developing a muscle. And so while you can have mustard seed faith and you think, well, I have faith, mustard seed faith is potent faith. It's like I have alcohol, you have alcohol, but the one with the hundred proof alcohol is going to have a stronger alcohol. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't drink, but that's the best way I can think of right, what is right. it in that seed that made the difference? It was the, it was the power packed potential of one who doesn't just say, I believe, but one who operates in authority. Mm-hmm. So I will say this, the, there's something we teach inside of our programs called the triple A. There's a lot of people who go through setbacks and trauma and events in their life And they say, well, where is God in this? I'm trying Mm -hmm. to find God in this. God is always in it. The question is, are you still in control of it or is he? And sometimes we can have faith. We go to church on Sundays. We show up at all the big events. We're actually big donors and big givers. And we're doing all the right things. But really in our heart, we know there is an element of disconnect because I don't 100% believe him. I don't a hundred percent, hundred proof believe that he's going to work this out for good. And I would say I was at that place. Interesting. You can be at that place and be in the the down and outs Mm -hmm. and you can be at that place and be on the top of the mountain. There's a lot of people that we work with both. We work with a lot of homeless, a lot of people who've been rejected and, and, and outcasted, but we also work with a lot of people. Our, our coaching program, for example, is a high ticket coaching program. We work with people who've been really good at making money, but they have not been good at doing life. Mm. And so while we help them with a high level, uh, 12 month university program, like Harvard meets the Bible. (laughs) <laughs> right. Where we help them see business acumen at the highest level. My husband and I've been, we've been married for 27 years and we do everything together. There's so many people who've never seen a functional, healthy, God fearing relationship. Mm. So they only know what they know based mm. upon what they've seen. But faith actually doesn't even operate in what we know. That's not faith, that's logic. Mm. Faith isn't even in when you have a full understanding. Faith begins where logic ends. I'm going to quote myself on that. (laughs) Faith begins where logic ends, where it makes no sense, Right. where there's no explanation. That's really when you're starting to get into that hundred proof faith, because it requires you to get beyond your logic or your understanding. There's a scripture that says, um, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own logic or understanding, but Mm -hmm. in everything, in all your ways, acknowledge him, have faith in him, trust him, and he will make your path straight. In other words, he'll take the crooked road. He'll take the unexplainable, unimaginable, Mm -hmm. unthinkable, the trauma, the setbacks, and he will straighten it out. So it points towards a trajectory that leads to his blessing. And, mm-hmm. and, and there's more scripture in the Bible in Deuteronomy that says he will make you the head and not the tail above right. only and not beneath blessed coming in blessed going out. That means that if you are right now feeling overwhelmed and stressed and full of anxiety and fear, that means that look up child, the best is yet to come. It means that you might right now be, we teach something called the chart of transcendence. You might be in the lowest level of what we call the 40th floor and above. Uh, I had a a dream and God talks to me greatly through dreams and prophecy. But in this particular dream in the bottom floor, I got on an elevator and in the bottom floor, it was, everything was dark. It was anxiety and fear and depression and worry. And it was a bunch of people laying fetal in their bed. They couldn't get out. They were numb to life. If I were to say, what is your vision? They didn't have one. Mm -hmm. And he began to show me that there are levels of conscious human consciousness 
but there's still not the fullness of what God has in store for you. So I went mm -hmm. through all these levels on this elevator in the stream. And the second level was red and it was people who were in, in very dog, uh, very much um, controlling narcissistic for power, greed, money. Uh, they looked powerful. There were a lot of politicians, a lot of ministers, a lot mm -hmm. of business owners that were operating. It looked good, but it, everything was about money, 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 go, go drive. It was beast mode. And in that ele elevator, I heard him say, I will show you my best mode so you can get out of beast mode. The next level was blue and it was dogma. It was rules, regulations. It was politics. If you vote for me, like I, I vote, I like you. If you don't vote like I like, I don't like you. And so it was people who were very confined by black and white rules. And then the next tier, the next level was green and green was people that were hugging the trees, right? They just love the earth. They wanted to save the earth mm -hmm. and they were getting released from the money, 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 but they were still focused on things on this earth, earth mm -hmm. consciousness. And then the final tier was the 39th floor. And it seemed like that's where it was. That's where there were so many big named people with TV shows and big name people with um, everything money can buy. They were putting things in the planet. They were putting satellites in the air. And it was like, surely that's the pinnacle right. of success. And they were actually using their money to change. They were change agents. They were using their money to change the world. But in this dream, I got up to that floor and had everything money can buy. And I the door opened and I, I heard a voice say, get out and look to the right. And I looked to the right and there was another elevator and it said the 40th floor and above. And there was a key in, in my faith and in my belief that the key that went into that penthouse elevator, it, it had the name Jesus on it. And, it. and he said, use the key. And so I walked over and I put the key in and it opened up the door to the 40th floor and above. And it was everything money can't buy. Hmm. It was love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness. There was the most unbelievable peace. Everything was gold. And it was so in our chart, uh, we signify it with gold, but we call it the mind of Christ. We call it being able to operate out of this world, not human consciousness, but to actually have God consciousness. And so I would say to that person right now that, that you're, you're stuck and you're like, God, like, why is this, why is this happening to, why has this been taking so long? I would say, find yourself in the 39th floor and below, see where you're at. Maybe you're, maybe you're blue, maybe you're red. Maybe you are in that black zone where it's just anxious and worry. What I'll tell you is there's more. Mm. And so that's hope. Wow. If you know there's more, there's hope and an earnest expectation that something good is about to happen. And you might be listening to this today because he wanted to connect with you and say, look up, child, because there's more for you. And when the student is ready, the teachers appear. And I believe that that is what God has put my husband and I and our staff and our team and fueled by fire. We're here to help people identify the fire that fuels their vision, that fuels their company. It's bigger than the 39th foot. It's bigger than what money, money only makes you more of what you are. I've had a lot of money and yeah. multiple times God has asked us to give all of our money away at the peak of our income earning potential at the peak of our blessing. He has said, will you give it away? Will you trust me in this? That requires a different kind of faith. Faith is a journey that builds upon it in what season you're in. It might look different today than it did when my house burned down or when I went through the divorce when I was younger or when we right. lost the, my, my dad. Today, the faith is he just builds upon it because he wants us to give him our yes. You know, I was writing down as you're talking when I just feel like I'm God speaking to me as you're talking mm -hmm. and I, I make notes and I make notes and one of the things I wrote down at the very beginning when you started talking was the significance of number of seven, because you said you had to go through seven collapses. And just that popped in my mind was the biblical meaning of the number seven, which mm -hmm. is very interesting. I don't know why I wrote that, but I also wrote down your joyful life passes you by while striving for a better life. 
And I think that's what we do sometimes with social media, right? We're always striving for what somebody else has. We're always in that comparison mode and comparison is the killer of a joyful life. Because if you're constantly comparing your life to someone else's, you're never living the life that God intended for you because we all are living a life that God intended for us. Why are we always striving to live the life of someone else that we're not meant to live. It's never going to be a life of everything God intended for us because it's not the intended life that he had for us. So I'm glad that you were talking about how God will speak to you in different ways. And it takes a different kind of faith for him to say, do you trust me? And that's why let me confirm your seven as well. Break out of (laughs) mediocrity, break out of your mindset. Um, So our, we have a 62 acre ranch we have two properties and we put transitional living for the women and girls that our, our dream, our, our goal always is for whether they're coming out of homelessness or trafficking or abuse or whatever, is we want to take them through our four stage process and M women. So we have our for profit, which is fuel by fire. Our nonprofit is M women fuel by fire is a, uh, we raise money for nonprofit organizations through yeah. fuel by fire. So all of our clients know that when they come on a a part of our program, that they are heavily investing as well in the future of what we believe God's called us to do to rescue and restore the lives of people who've gone through trauma. And um, so our property out here, when we bought this property, it didn't have an address. And so we said, we want the address to have sevens in it, no matter what the address is, we want it to have seven. So we ended up getting six, seven, 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 seven. It had to be in the six because of the, the highway that it was on. So we did seven, seven, seven. Um, our wedding was seven, seven, seven. And um, wow. our, our, our birth of M women was seven, seven, seven. So 7 PM um, on the 7th, uh, 2007. So wow. Sevens have been very significant because we do believe in that. It's the, it's the number of perfection and finality. Yeah. And I want to believe that you just wrote that down on your paper, not knowing all those things about me. This is the first time you and I have ever had deep connections is someone right now you're listening and you need finality. You need to, you, you need this to be the end of one season so you can go into a season of perfection because eight is the number of new beginnings. And you have been saying, God, why, why, why hasn't this worked? I've done all the things I've checked all the boxes. I'm doing everything the gurus tell me to do. Why is it not working for me? And I really believe today you are listening right now. This is probably not the direction either of us thought this conversation would go, but That's okay. you are, <laughs> you're listening today because it is finished. Whatever you have grieved through, whatever you have struggled through, whatever you have been trying to keep your hands like on a roller coaster, white knuckle, holding on, trying to figure it out. I sense that God is saying to you today, throw your hands up in the air. It's time to enjoy the ride. Yeah. Let it take you where it's going to take you. Let the story take you where it's going to take you. Let the setback take you where it's going to take you and trust that the creator of the universe, not the universe, the creator, creator of, of the universe. Amen. A way of what Romans 8, 28 says, all things, even the crazy, chaotic, unimaginable, stupid, idiotic, unfair things. He says all things. Look up the word all. It means all encompassing. All things work together for the good of them that love God. So ask yourself, do I love God? And if you you stopped believing in God, it's okay. He still believes in you. Mm. Make this your seven, the day of finality. Today, I choose to believe that he has a plan for this story. The rest of that says all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purposes. What is your purpose? To reflect him in whatever the story, whatever the the gift is that he's given you, whatever the life is that he's given you, whatever you're going to do today, if you're going to Walmart, you're going to the grocery store, wherever you're at around the world, listening to this, whatever you do, let your light so shine before men that they see your good attitude, your good works, your goodness, your mercy, your kindness. And they go, what? And you point to God. It says, and glorify the father. We are human reflectors. That's all we are on this planet. We get one life to reflect his glory in the good, the bad, 
Nobody really cares how much money you make. What they want to know, can you endure like I had to endure? Right. They want to know, did you shine in the midst of adversity? Because I can't necessarily relate to all your wins, but I do understand what it feels like to cry myself to sleep at night. Right. Can you choose joy even when sometimes you just got to go ahead and cry? Can you still be joyful? Because joy is not a, it's not an emotion. It's a characteristic of the 40th floor and above. It's right. a, a quality of life that no matter what's going on around us, we can still operate in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and what we call scripture calls the fruit of the spirit. I love that, Stacy, And thank you for confirming that God speaks to me because, you know, there's so many times I think that some of us go, I don't know if God's talking. I don't know. And I truly believe that when God speaks to you, that's why I always tell people to journal journal and write things down because I believe it flows and it comes to you. I had no idea about your seven right? <laughs> significance in your life, but for some reason, when you said that, that's what I wrote down as significant. And it, and I think that it was more of you confirmed that I know that God speaks to me. I did not, I know he was probably speaking to me before 2007. I just wasn't listening. You know what I mean? But when my son passed away, it was almost like I had a completely different ear to what God was saying. I don't know if it's because I had to stay connected to my son in some way. And that was the way to do it was through God, but it was my faith changed. My relationship changed. My entire life changed. Everything changed even to the point to where my, this, the overwhelming sadness and, and misery that I had and destruction that I really felt like that was going to come on my life to the most inner joy that I've ever felt in my life. And it's, it's strange to say, but I truly believe that I have completely different relationship. I didn't even know what a relationship was with God, to be honest with you. I was a Christian. I went to church, you know, when I was 13, I was in church looking, you know, at dad's watch to see if it was time to go to Piccadilly, the whole thing. We sang the hymn just as I am without one plea, because it was a Baptist church, all the things, right. But it wasn't until truly that when my son died, that I was seeking a connection to my son that I started to hear from God. And one of the things that I wrote down is you were talking about money and people's, you know, net worth, and it doesn't matter how much money you make. And I wrote net worth doesn't reflect your self-worth. And I think there's, there are people still, there's a lot of people actually that believe that their net worth is a direct reflection on what their value, what their self-worth mm -hmm. is. If I don't make a lot of money, I'm not worth a lot. If I make a, if I make a ton of money, then I must be worth a lot. And neither is true. doesn't matter how much money you make or how, how much you don't make. It doesn't reflect because we are children of God. And to say that God would have a child that's less valuable than another is insanity to me because we are all children of God and we have the option to either trust and let him lead. And you were saying something about um, uh, taking over your life and letting him, you know, take the way. And I immediately pictured two people struggling over a car steering wheel. Can you imagine driving down the road and your passenger is going, turn, 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 and they're pulling on the steering wheel and your car's going this way and you're pulling another way. And I think so many times that's what we do. We want to drive that car, boy, I am in control. I know I'm a control freak, have been since I think the day I was born. And I want to control that car. And God still speaks to me and says, okay, let me know, Sherry, if you want to drive or you want me to drive. And I can just picture him folding his arms sometimes going, let me know when you want me to drive. It'll be much easier because I know the way. You don't know the way. You're just trying to find the way. And I think that's what we do sometimes. We don't have enough faith and trust in God that we can literally let go of the steering wheel. Can you imagine letting go of the steering wheel doing 70 miles an hour, letting go of the steering wheel and saying, all right, God, then you drive because I have no clue where I'm going. And I've been driving in circles for years and I'm getting nowhere. I've learned that in the 40th floor and above, the economic system is not of this world. God does. It's an upside down kingdom. He doesn't, he's not controlled by the banks. He's not controlled by the school system or the political system. Right. He's out of this world. 
so he can do anything he wants to. So his economic exchange is not money. It is, can you give love when you've been persecuted? Can you have joy when you're surrounded by suffering? And so when we cash in on the fruit of the spirit, what happens is we begin to receive from heaven on earth, financial abundance, heaven on earth, joy and love, mm-hmm. as opposed to what this world or things can provide, because we all know they don't make you happy. In 2017, uh, we were at the peak of our income earning potential and careers, and we were making more money than ever before. And uh, I woke up at three o'clock in the morning and, and felt like the Holy Spirit said, will you give all your money away? Mm. Would you step away from your career? Will you step away from your title and give it all away? And that morning I waited for my husband to get up and I said to him, cause I was the mouthpiece for our companies. Yeah. And uh, I said, I really believe God's asking me to step down and you step in and I'm going to just focus on and women. I'm going to focus on feeding the poor. I'm going to focus on just whatever God wants me to. So I'd get up in the morning and he agreed. I got up in the mornings and I would just say, good morning, Holy spirit. What would you have of me today? And I'd sit in my office And I would wait until I heard something. Mm. And that started a journey. One month later, my husband came and he wasn't one to usually have a lot of big, you know, colorful dreams. He came to me and he said, I had the same dream. God's asking me to step away from my position as well. And we're supposed to give everything we have away to the poor and trust him. Wow. And remember, sometimes it's giving him your pain, but sometimes it's also giving him your power and your title and your abundance. And so we said yes to that. And we went on a journey of giving all of our money away. We put our house up for sale, went nine months without a vehicle. Every time when when you're in corporate America and you've got a bit of a pedigree of success, you become what's called a free agent in, in the world. And so you start getting all these offers to go to other companies. And every time I'd get an offer, Christian companies, big companies, multi billion dollar companies, I would get a no. I'd not asked you to do that. I've asked you to trust me. So we went uh, for about month five. I started feeling scared. I started feeling, oh my God, what have I led my family into? Right. What are we doing? <laughs> um, and we didn't have the money to pay the bills that month. And we had fed 10,000 homeless people in Dallas, Texas at the convention center. And we wow. were event coordinators of a big event. So we were, we were all going all in. In that season, I remember one day my husband got up and he said he felt like he had a Mack truck on his chest. He was like, I don't know. We had been selling everything because the house wasn't selling. So we were selling, you know, pictures and jewelry and anything that we could right. find it each month. And then uh, we realized we have so much excess here. We so many years you think you don't have. And then it's like, why do we have 77 pillows? <laughs> Like, why are there so many, we have, we have excess of so many things. Anyhow, that day he came back. And, um, when he was in my office, I said, well, baby, go for a walk, just breathe. God's got us. He's, he's taken us this far. He comes back in and, and got the mail and went in the kitchen and sat down and, and he opens up an envelope and starts screaming. And I run in there because the last he talked to me was he had a Mack truck on his chest. Oh no. I ran in there and he's waving this visa bill. And, and I thought, okay, we got this. He said, it's not a bill, read it. And it was Visa saying that they had overcharged us interest for X amount of time. And they wrote us a check for about $32 more than what we needed that month. Wow. No one I've ever talked to has ever heard of Visa doing that ever. What that said to us is God has a way There is an economic system. God controls everything, even the hearts of kings. If he wants to get it to you, he will get it to you one way or another. We ended up going for two and a half years like that. Two and a half years of complete giving, living in a place where we were totally trusting God. People don't give money to rich people. We would have money on our doorstep in yellow envelopes. Um, We felt very led that we weren't supposed to talk about it. So I say that because... Um, In 2019, God positioned my husband and I back into telecom, into corporate America. And he said, here's where I want you to go. And it was, there was not a single believer in that company. Nobody like us in that company. Not a single one. We're thinking, why would you pick this company? (laughs) And he said, because it's going to be a pathway to where I'm about to take you. And that would be to launch fuel by fire. So we said yes to that 2019 on my birthday, my 50th birthday, wow. uh, my, our house sold. We had been trying to sell it for 18 months. It sold. They wanted it in 20 days. It was a cash offer, which meant we wouldn't be able to have Christmas in it. 
a little bit of the money. And we knew that God wasn't calling us to go back into a big house, back into something, but we had equity. So we, we bought an RV and we drove off the lot January 1, 2020. We drove off the lot in our RV. Three months later, COVID hits and the rest of the world was in lockdown. We were in freedom fishing. We owed no man. I mean, we, we had nothing, but we owed no man. We didn't have, um, we weren't in any systems. We didn't have a connection to anything, we could be fishing, we could be hunting, we could be camping. We were, we didn't have to wear masks. So there was this protection that only came through obedience. Right. Had we not have been obedient, we would have been where the rest of the world was is locked down. And it's interesting that whether God is asking you to give up your sorrow, whether God is asking you to give up your fear or your worry, your anxiety, or whether God's asking you to give up your millions, your title, your abundance. God doesn't see things or even circumstances like we do on this planet, what he's looking for. And I remember I had a pastor that came and said, why would God ask you to give up all your money? We were very big givers in that season and um, are even more significant givers now. But um, he said, why would God ask you to give up your money when you use your money to advance the kingdom of God? Um, My mom said the same thing. Why would God put you through this when you guys use your money to advance the kingdom of God. So I went to God and I said, God, why would you ask this of us when we use our money to advance the kingdom of God? He said, say it again. I said, why would you ask this of us? We use our money to advance your kingdom. And he said, Stacy, doesn't that sound a little narcissistic? You think I need your money to advance my kingdom? Mm. He said, I don't need your money. I'm looking for your yes, no matter the cost give me your yes. And that spoke to us then. And it speaks to us now. We've made since that day, a lot of money, more money than we had ever made before in our lives. And I want to say this on this podcast to memorialize this, but I woke up this morning and he asked us to do it again. So I'm on this podcast with you right now. And I woke up to a God that said, will you give it away again? Wow. Would you be willing to go all in for me again? My husband's been in the other room uh, talking to our accountants, talking to people that are around us saying, hey, um, he's asking us to do it again. And so I say to that person, whatever it is you're holding on to, God will not ask of you something that does not cost you deeply. Mm. But on the other side, I can tell you there is an abundance of peace. There is an abundance of joy. There is an abundance of, of, of well-being and caretaking. I mean, the things that God has blessed our life with because we were willing to say, yes, I can't even explain it to you on this planet. We'll have to get to heaven and have a party one day. Right. <laughs> That's all to understand how that kingdom exchange happens when you give up what you're holding on to so much. I mean, I'm sitting here right now in front of me. I've got a big picture window and I'm overlooking. The pad has been laid. The, the, the ground has been dug for our retreat center. And our retreat center is to advance the kingdom of God, to help people, businesses, and people who've gone through trauma. Um, if, I, if I say yes today and I go all in, that means all the money for that too. Wow. So that means everything that you have planned and you thought it was going to go this way, Can you say, yes, can you go up to the top of a mountain with your little boy at 12 years old, like Abraham and raise the knife to something you love your dream of all dreams. And I believe that when we say yes, heaven begins to go into overdrive on our behalf. He did for Mary. He did for Moses. He did for Noah. And the story goes on Jesus, Paul, when you say yes, you will have be astounded at how God writes the rest of your story. Wow. Well, you just gave me the title for our show. When you say yes, with Mm -hmm. Stacey Wallace, (laughs) this is another thing that I wrote down. He will not ask anything of you without giving you the strength and the pathway to do it. I've had so many people, of course, over the course of 17 years say, Sherry, you are so strong. I don't know how you did it. And my answer is I didn't, (laughs) I, I did not, I did not bury my son and live the next 17 years with my own strength. Absolutely did not. I don't know any loving, true mother that puts her 
children above herself, no matter what, that can say in her own strength that she can bury a child and move on in a way that she feels growth yet still connected to that child and also serve the Lord and the traumatic event that, that she went through. I don't know a mother. If, if, if you know a mother, Hey, uh, send me an email and let me know (laughs) because (laughs) I don't know a mother that can truly do that in her own strength. I had, um, I had someone ask me one time that she said that she is not, I, I spoke to a grief group was in Arkansas. And she said, well, I don't believe in God. So how do you suggest that I move forward after burying my son? And my answer to her was, I have no idea. I said, I'm, I'm literally here to tell you how I did it. You're mm-hmm. asking me to help you do it in a way I have no inclination on how to do none. And in order to move forward without God, you'll have to talk to somebody that's been able to do that. I don't know of anybody that has and not lived any okay. type of fulfilled or hope filled life. Mm-hmm. So unfortunately, my answer is, if you're in that situation today is I can't help you. I'm just not that strong. You know, I may act like it sometimes, but I am just not that strong. You, my friend, <laughs> are the epitome of strength because God is giving you the ability to really listen and be obedient. And you truly know that he's going to give you the strength and the pathway. He's done it once. He's going to do it again. And he could do it again in your lifetime, right? He could do it again in your lifetime. We have no idea what he's asking us to do. We have to listen and we have to be obedient. And it's not always easy. I want to ask you on purpose-driven peace and profits. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that a little bit before we go off and you tell everybody where we can find you. Tell me a little bit about what it means for purpose-driven peace and profits. It's making your purpose reflecting God, number one. The profits that are linked to our abilities. Remember, I talked about the AAA, our ability. That's the first A. Uh, That has wings. You can see it by great artists, recording artists, athletes, money comes and money goes. You can be up one day, you can be in the doghouse the next day. Right. Um, Money based upon ability has wings. The second A is anointing. That's that grace. That's that smothering smothering or smearing on of God, where you know that person's gift is not just their own. That one, that gift is, I think, a Whitney Houston. Uh, Mm -hmm. When you heard her sing, it was like, there's just an anointing on her to sing. There's something Mm -hmm. that's not of this world. You can see it on people who are really good in business. I mean, they don't have to necessarily, the Bible says gift is without repentance. So that, that, that anointing that God puts a, a piece of him on you is, is pretty amazing, but there's still one more. And I, I'll, I'll just use Whitney as an example. Again, amazing singer so talented. What an ability. No doubt that she was anointed. She loved God. Mm -hmm. She talked about Jesus. She talked about her relationship with God. Where Whitney missed it, and a lot of us do, is the third A, the authority of God. Mm -hmm. To be able to take authority over your emotions, to take authority over the voices that are in your head, to take authority over your circumstances. And when you operate in the triple A ability, anointing and authority. Now you see through your circumstance and you see the peace, even in the pain, though the peace and profits comes when you say, God, I understand right now life's, you know, you already promised us there would be tribulation. There would be suffering. There would be setbacks. So I'm going to align myself that my peace is not defined by my circumstances. My peace is that I know you're going to work it out. You've already figured it out. You've got a plan and a purpose for me. So peace, purpose is aligning with the purposes of God, letting your light shine no matter what you're going through or where you're at. And so that the profits that come from that life, those are profits that are heaven on earth. When scripture said, Jesus teaches how to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So I want what heaven has already defined for me. I don't want to have 
you know, the money of this, you know, money is not intrinsically evil, but it does have spirits and greed and all of that attached to it. Mm -hmm. I want heaven's economics in my life. And so when you have peace and profits, now the money comes and it doesn't come to you. You understand you're just a steward. It goes through you. And so peace and profits requires the triple A. And then it also requires kingdom authority and stewardship, knowing that I own nothing. I don't own this land. I don't own the money in our bank. If he's, if I wake up and he says, give it, it's not mine to hold on to. It's his, I have to say yes to stewarding what he's asked me to steward. And sometimes that comes in the form of a story, the loss of a son, the loss of a a house or the loss of a business or the loss of a loved one. But one thing we do know is when you give it, when you let it go, when you planted a seed, don't ever uproot it. God has a way of giving you above and beyond all you could ever ask or think. Absolutely. That's one of my favorite Bible verses. Mm-hmm. Um, I repeat that over and over. God, you said mm-hmm. abundantly and above, but beyond all things that I could hope for. I, I say that all the time. I, I'll just walk through the house and I'll be in my car. And it's just one of those verses, God, I'll remind him, you know, we remind God, God, you said, you know, and mm-hmm. I don't know if he doesn't really need to be reminded, but he wants us to know that he wants us to repeat his word. I believe that he wants us to say, God, this is what you said. You know, mm-hmm. I know I'm a child of God and you said in your word this, um, to always remind God of his promises. And, and I do that and it really, it fuels me. Mm-hmm. It fuels me and it inspires me. And I truly believe Stacy, that you are anointed. Mm-hmm. You are definitely anointed. And by the way, when you broke out in song on your, uh, TEDx talk, you're anointed that way too. (laughs) You just started singing. I was like, whoa. I mean, just completely. We went from, I was just all into listening to you. And then you broke out in song on your talk. I was like, whoa, that is, I mean, he is just all over you girl. And I am so honored and I am so grateful that you came on and you talked to my audience because the real girl talk community is just that we are women that strive for excellence. And we all, we, we lean on each other, all of the guests that come on the show and my Friday fires that I do is what I call my Friday fire messages. They're all biblical. We lean into that because just like a car needs gas to go, we actually need to be fueled, right? We need to have that Mm -hmm. fuel and that fire inside of us to keep going spiritually. And I appreciate you. Tell everybody where we can find your nonprofit as well as your profit and where we can find you online. Well, you can ease it. The easiest is follow me on Facebook, Instagram. It's all at Stacy Wallace, Uh, but you can go to Stacy wallace.com s-t-a-c-i and that i'm sure she'll put it in the show notes but yeah. that has a link to everything it's kind of like the centralized hub the nonprofit organization is emwomen.com and uh that's where it's a 501 c3 and uh, so you can see that again it'll all be on stacywallace.com but one thing i would like to uh share with everybody is because we are such a high ticket program working with CEOs and influencers and leaders have programs that are pretty expensive for most people to, to fathom right. um, our 12 month university is like going to Harvard. Uh, but what I like to do is every few weeks, all throughout this year, we have been giving extravagantly every six weeks. I do five days, like a mission um, five days of just pouring out the best of the best that we've got as far as the methods and the strategies it's called uh, you just go to fbfchallenge.com it stands for fuel by fire but fbfchallenge.com we have one more that we're doing this year so you can go depending upon when you hear this but you'll be able to go and uh, fbfchallenge.com and it's 5 days of it's called the legacy wealth mastery course and that course is life changing. And and it was very intentional that we jump out of what we're doing on a regular, with our staff, with all of our advocates, we're a very high touch, high accountability program. And to come in and just serve the community, just serve, got tens of thousands of people in our community, just serve them at the highest level. We give everybody a personal coach, everybody a, a personal consultant, during that week. So whatever they're going through, they can get the help they need. So that's fbfchallenge.com. Otherwise, Stacey Wallace. 
I love that. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. And yes, I will. I'm going to put everything in the show notes. So everyone that is listening will be able to find Stacy and be able to take advantage of the, the challenge that she was just speaking of because it's, um, and I love nonprofits. I love the fact that you help women and people that have been through tragedy. I don't know if you know who Nancy Alcorn is, but I love her to death. Mercy uh, multiplied. I love her so much. She came on the show and being that she started her first house in Louisiana and that's where I'm from. Um, originally I live in South Florida now is it just touched my heart and mm-hmm. Stacy, um, Nancy and I have stayed in touch since we had the show and I love her dearly. So thank you for doing that, Stacy. And, and thank you also for, for coming on the show. We appreciate you so much. My honor. Thank you so much. 